NDT stands for non-destructive testing. So our primary measure is basically to make sure the car is safe. After a race weekend, the car will get stripped down to the bare structure. Anything on the car from nuts and bolts to uprights and axles, you name it, if it's metallic, it comes in here to be tested. We can process plus 100 components a week between all of us across the NDT group. If we remove NDT from the equation, there is a risk that components that are not to a safe standard would fail on the car, causing death or serious injury to spectators or the driver. Ultrasonic testing sends a sound out of a probe and through the component, and that picks up any defects. So we have a wishbone leg here that was on the rig during testing and failed. So anything like that where we have an accident or it's failed, we will still analyse what's left to provide the full picture to the designers and engineers. We'll be applying the couplant which sends the sound wave into the component. But what we're seeing here is the sound wave is being interrupted by a defect in the component. What we'll do is we'll map, start to map those out and then later on we'll submit it to design for their analysis. We also check bonds on structural parts. We can only tell you if a part is bonded into the wishbone. We can't tell you how well bonded it is. And that's one of the things that Alex really does well. So the Comet method is using a stylus probe. The new process is going to be using a 3D laser scanning device. A lot of my work is based around making sure that the processes that the guys are doing on the shop floor are as best as they can be to ensure that we're having good bond preparation. This is one of the processes, obviously, that helps aid that. So if we can ensure that things are done as the best as they can be, this gives these guys more confidence as they're signing off parts to go into the car. At a race, there's always a bit of wheel bashing and things that happen. So we look at parts for damage that's not often picked up on camera. So we have a rear rocker and we're going to do a fluorescent dye penetrant check to see if there's any uh, surface cracks on the component. The penetrant inspection method uses a fluorescent dye. It picks up surface breaking defects or any damage that's been caused at an event. It's just a fluorescent um, water-based fluid, so it's designed to get into any little tight cracks and it shines up under ultraviolet light. Now I'm going to wash off the excess penetrant. The molecules of the water are uh, bigger than the molecules of the penicillin, so it doesn't wash out the crate. Then we examine it under a UV light to look for these defects. And as you can see, we've got a nice big crack running over the surface of that part there. Um, they're not always as big as that, but this one is particularly big. It's a nice showpiece. Um, and what that is, that's that penetrant that was soaking into that defect. It's now come bleeding out of the crack. On steel components, we don't want to use the dye penetrant inspection um, because we could uh, induce corrosion onto the surface. With this method, we're going to magnetise the component, apply a solution over the component. The fluid is a, an oil carrying based fluid with fluorescent iron particles in the bottom of the fluid and they're all mixed up and it's then particles are going to be attracted into any defects that are there. Any sort of surface cracking we find, uh, we flag it up on NCR and the stress guys and, and decide what they're going to do with it. Well, this part would actually be scrapped because that's a whopping great big crack. A lot of people never see all the background work that goes into getting a Formula One car to a race. Going head to head with other teams and other departments, working around motorsport, F1, amazing. Being at other teams in the past, this is definitely a work hard, play hard mentality shows that it's the end product of being the best.